Welcome to Who's Better Episode 2. In this episode, we will discuss Niels Bohr and Enrico Fermi. We will start with Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr was born in Copenhagen, Denmark on the 7th of October in 1885, the second of three children. His father, Christian Bohr, worked at the University of Copenhagen and his mother, Ellen Adler Bohr, was a banker. As a child, Niels Bohr showed interest in association football, known as soccer in the US, physics, and math. Niels Bohr went to the Gamelholm Latin School when he was 7 years old. When he was 18 years old, he went to the University of Copenhagen, where he learned math, physics, astronomy, and philosophy with three teachers. When he was 20 years old, the Royal Danish Academy of Sciences and Letters sponsored a science competition to find surface tensions of different liquids. Niels Bohr used his father's laboratory in the University of Copenhagen to do research for his paper, which he submitted late. However, his paper still won due to several elaborations on the original topic that he had done. Even though he was very good at math and physics, Bohr was not the best in his family. He got his master's degree for mathematics in 1910, months after his brother Harold got his. In 1911, Niels Bohr moved to England and attended Trinity College. He was taught physics, specifically electromagnetism and atomic structure and nuclear physics, by Joseph Larmer and James Johns. He later worked with another famous scientist, Ernest Rutherford, in the Victoria University of Manchester. However, his work was disrupted by his marriage. Niels Bohr married Margaret Norland on the 1st of August in 1912, only days after returning from his work in England. Several days after his marriage, he returned to England for his honeymoon. When Bohr returned to Denmark, he became a teacher at the University of Copenhagen. While he was at the university, he wrote the Trilogy Papers, part of which combined the Planck quantum theory to Rutherford's atomic model. This became known as the Bohr model of the atom. The Bohr model was the most accurate representation of the atom at that time, as it included the idea of electron orbits and electron charge. However, the Bohr model did not work for elements other than hydrogen. The Trilogy Papers also explained why the Balmer series the equation to derive the visible spectral lines of hydrogen developed by Johann Balmer worked. The trilogy papers were seen as colossal discoveries by many famous scientists, including Albert Einstein and Ernest Rutherford. Bohr later left the University of Copenhagen to teach in Manchester, but in 1916 he was appointed to the Chair of Theoretical Physics at the University of Copenhagen. In 1917, Bohr began to raise money to establish an institute for theoretical physics in Denmark. And with the support of the Danish government and funding from several people, in 1918 the institute was built. It was named the Niels Bohr Institute in his honor. After the discovery of Compton scattering, Bohr and two other scientists, Hans Kramer and John Slater, worked to understand and explain why and how matter interacted with electromagnetic waves. This research led to further development of matrices, which are nowadays commonly used in quantum physics. After World War II began, Bohr was at risk of getting captured by the Nazis, so he moved to Sweden. He then proceeded to England, and from England, he visited Los Alamos in New Mexico, where the Manhattan Project, the American nuclear bomb project, was happening. At Los Alamos, Niels Bohr met many other famous scientists such as Robert Oppenheimer and Richard Feynman, as well as helping with the modulated neutron initiators. He thought that the nuclear project should be shared and discussed with Franklin Roosevelt, but Winston Churchill disagreed with his idea. However, after the detonation of the first Soviet nuclear bomb, the UN formed the International Atomic Energy Agency to oversee nuclear energy use. When Bohr returned to Copenhagen in 1945, 16 days after the atomic bomb had been dropped on Nagasaki, he was elected president of the Royal Danish Academy of Arts and Sciences again, and the current king, Frederick IX, appointed Bohr to be the new knight of the Order of the Elephant, the highest ranking scientific order in Denmark. For his work in atomic structure and quantum physics, Niels Bohr was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1922, the Franklin Medal in 1926, and the Atoms for Peace Award in 1957. He also had an element, Borium, named after him, an institute in Denmark named after him, and he helped or influenced several now famous scientists. He died at the age of 77 on the 18th of November in 1962 in Copenhagen.
Now we will discuss Enrico Fermi. Enrico Fermi was born on the 29th of September in 1901 in Rome, Italy, a third child. His father, Alberto Fermi, worked in the railroad division, and his mother, Ida de Gattis, worked as a teacher. Fermi had an older brother named Giulio and an older sister named Maria, none of whom were religious. Fermi and his brother Giulio both liked to build or observe mechanical objects, and as children they made mechanical toys such as a little spinning motor. After Giulio died of a lung operation that went wrong, Enrico Fermi made toys on his own. To educate himself, Enrico bought a book on physics which he found at a local market called Campo dei Fiori, which he read in a couple of weeks. The book, a 900-page book, included most of the physics topics known at the time, such as classical mechanics, astronomy, and math. Later, Fermi became friends with Enrico Persico, who acted like Fermi's brother Giulio. Fermi and Persico built more complex things than Enrico and Giulio had built, such as gyroscopes. They also conducted experiments, such as measuring the magnetic field of the Earth. A friend of his father, Adolfo Amede, also gave Fermi books to read. The books were about mathematics and physics, which were Fermi's favorite subjects. In 1918, Enrico Fermi graduated from high school. Adolfo Amade, the same person who had given Fermi books on physics and math, urged Fermi to apply to the Scuola Normale Superior. His parents did not agree with Adolfo and wanted Fermi to study at the University of Rome. However, they gave up and let Fermi attend the school of his choice. To study at the school, Fermi had to pass a test. For the given theme, which was specific characteristics of sound, Fermi derived the partial differential equation for a vibrating rod and solved it using Fourier analysis. His essay got in first place out of all the essays that got admitted. Fermi was so smart that some of the teachers actually asked him to teach them something or to organize seminars on the topics. Since Fermi knew everything that was taught in classes, he studied tensor calculus. Besides tensor calculus, he also learned much about quantum physics. In 1920, Fermi and two other students were admitted to the physics department of their school. In that department, Fermi and his friends could do whatever they wanted. Fermi decided to take advantage of this situation and studied X-ray crystallography, the study of atom formation in crystals using X-rays. With the advanced equipment, Fermi was able to conduct very thorough research. In 1921, Fermi published two papers in a journal called Nuovo Cemento about physics, more specifically on gravity and electromagnetic charges, which got famous and were published in German journals as well as the Italian journal. In 1922, when Fermi was 21 years old, he submitted his thesis paper on X-ray diffraction images to the Scuola Normale Superiore. He received his laurea shortly after. In 1924, Fermi decided to travel and meet other famous scientists, such as Werner Heisenberg and Max Born. He also studied in Leiden and taught mathematics at the University of Florence. When he returned to Italy, Enrico Fermi applied to be a mathematics professor at the University of Cagliari, but was not chosen. He then applied to be chair of theoretical physics at the University of Rome, and was accepted. Him and his students soon became known as the Via Panasperna Boys, due to the fact that the street on which the Institute of Physics was located was called Via Panasperna. His work at the Institute of Physics was interrupted by his marriage in 1928. He married Laura Capon on the 19th of July. Laura Capon was a science student at the University of Rome, six years younger than Fermi. Months after his marriage, Enrico Fermi was appointed to the Royal Academy of Italy. Benito Mussolini was the person who appointed Fermi to be a member, and Enrico Fermi became a fascist. However, he later came to oppose fascism. Fermi and the Via Panasperna boys are most well known for tackling the problem of nuclear fission. During the 1920s, scientists could not understand beta decay, the decay of atoms via the loss of an electron. The Via Panasperna boys fired neutrons at atoms starting from hydrogen. Once they got to fluorine, the atom emitted an electron. Their neutron bombardment went all the way to uranium, and when they bombarded uranium, it created two new elements, which they called hesperium and osonium. Hesperium is now known as plutonium, and osonium is now known as neptunium. Fermi's works on fission laid the groundwork for the first nuclear bomb. Fermi also participated directly in the Manhattan Project, helping to create the first instance of controlled nuclear fusion. 
Enrico Fermi moved to New York City in January of 1939. Since the discovery of nuclear fission by Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann, Fermi knew that fission would be extremely powerful and therefore extremely dangerous. He gave a lecture about nuclear fission to the U.S. Department of the Navy, and since Franklin Roosevelt had already received the Einstein Siller letter, which warned America that the Nazis were possibly building a nuclear bomb, the S-1 Uranium Committee was formed. Fermi was a part of the Uranium Committee, and he arranged the first reactor that would eventually have an instance of controlled nuclear fission. The reactor was the X-10 nuclear reactor, and the fission occurred on the 4th of November in 1943. Fermi also collaborated with Stanislaw Olam to calculate the amount of tritium needed for a fusion reaction, and taught at the University of Chicago towards his later years. Enrico Fermi died at age 53 in Chicago. For his work in nuclear physics, Fermi was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1938, the Hughes Medal in 1942, the Presidential Medal for Merit in 1946, the Franklin Medal in 1947, and the Rumford Prize in 1953. He had an element, fermium, named after him, the Fermi Gamma Ray Space Telescope named after him, two nuclear power plants named after him, and he also had an award, the Fermi Award named after him. Thank you for watching this episode of Who's Better, and if you liked it, please like the video, favorite it, and maybe even subscribe, and help support us. Thank you for watching this episode of Who's Better, and if you liked it, please like the video, favorite it, and maybe even subscribe, and help support us.